Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this thematic session on librarians. Uh, my name is Michiel de Jong. I'm from the Delft University of Technology, and I will be the session chair this afternoon. Um, yeah, just a quick notice. The presentations will be 20 minutes each. After 15 minutes, I'll give the speakers a, a reminder that's five minutes remaining, and then uh, hopefully we can build in some time for questions at the end. Um, if you have a question, uh, feel free to come to the front and grab one of the microphones. They are all supposed to work, or if you feel more comfortable shouting your question to the front, that's fine with me as well. If the speaker can't uh, hear you, I'll repeat the question for him. Um, and with that, I think it's uh, about time that we start. So our first, our first speaker for today is Axel Klinger from Hanover, Germany, and I'll leave it to him to introduce himself. Thank you, Axel. Yes, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone, and good afternoon. My name is Axel Klinger from the Technische Informationsbibliothek um, in Hanover, Germany. And I would like to present you our um, recent project on open educational resources, which is about an open educational resources search index, abbrevi abbreviated as RC. And this is a collaborative project between the um, University Library Center of um, North, North Rhine-Westphalia and Technische Informationsbibliothek in Hannover. So getting into a short agenda, it's about uh, what I would like to tell you. Um, what is the ERC? Why do we need the ERC? And as well as how to extend the ERC for further repositories. And then one of the um, current topics that we have is internationalization. So how to bring together international multilingual, cross-lingual um, repositories. And some um, view on a kind of repositories that we have in mind, which is um, based on GitLab. So first of all, the um, RC is a lightweight search index where we connect different heterogeneous um, repositories from all over Germany for now, and which is available at rc.org on the web. And um, the thing is about the technology stack that we have an elastic search back end, a reactive search front end, and there is a um, connection with Metafacture to um, have an interface to connect um, different repositories as well. The whole project is open source and could be reused for other um, projects as well if you are interested in building a regional search index, for example, to harvest information from learning management systems or regional university repositories. So you could just set up an equal search index and connect this later on again to the ERC, for example. So why do we need an ERC? Um, when we first started to create a regional repository for the university of, uh, universities of Lower Saxony in um, Germany, then we saw there were a lot of other repositories as well, arising from federated states, universities, and so on. And the um, problem is that with every new rep repository that um, comes ahead, the uh, effort for teachers is getting more and more hard to find the right um, resources for them as they have to search in different repositories. So the idea was to bring them all together to have one entry point for search. And that would also um, be a benefit of each repository if we don't have small, uh, multiple small repositories with um, a little amount of um, content then it's not relevant enough. But if we um, bring that all together to summarize it, it would be um, more relevant for um, teachers to find stuff for their subject, their topics, and so on. So just one example is our local repository, which is called Twilo, and uh, available at twilo.de, which is for Lower Saxony and funded by the Ministry of Science and Culture in Hanover, Germany. This repository is um, hosted by the Technische Informationsbibliothek as well, and that is just one example that is based on EduSharing, an open source software, which is a content management system, or let's say a document management system, where teachers can work together in a closed workspace and later on publish their um, work as open educational resources with the right um, license. And in the same way, they have been arisen um, a lot of other repositories from universities like Darmstadt or Düsseldorf or other federated states in Germany like um, Bavaria or North Rhine-Westphalia, Baden-Württemberg, for example. And those need to be brought together 
in one place. Um, and that's the idea that we had, um, our, our current approach to create a network of open educational repositories open educational resources repositories. And um, it's not about just a hierarchical structure where we harvest all the repositories, but the idea is that we bring it back to the repositories themselves, that they could um, include the um, overall search index by querying an API from the search index. And so this is what we have tried out with Twilio or Orca for North Rhine Westphalia as well. They just um, call all the, um, or call all the search queries directly on the ERC and bring back the results of the query into their front end of the repository. So that's the idea to have some kind of bidirectional connections between repositories and the, um, repository, the repositories and the search index. Um, just about a few words, um, how to extend these um, as the search index is that we have in the main place the modular ETL import process, which is based on the MetaFactor framework. And there we have some kind of domain specific language for um, harvesting repositories, which is great if we have similar kind of repositories like multiple um, instances of edu sharing, for example, we could reuse those scripts in order to have a lightweight import process. And the other way that we also use is just having um, other scripting languages. In our case, it's mostly Python that we use to connect to repositories that are not standardized, um, that don't have an API, for example, or a uh, sitemap, and where it's a little bit harder to pass the content, which is very individual. So both it's um, possible to bring in new repositories. And if you have um, any idea or suggestion which repository could be great to be integrated in some kind of global index, then just use the contact form and um, get in contact with us. We will um, check what is possible to include university repositories or other um, regional repositories as well. So getting to the idea of internationalization, we see that within the um, German repositories, we already have different content um, in English language, for example, or some content also in French or Italian language. And um, the idea is to support repositories from outside of Germany as well, as, and also different languages to search um, across the languages. And the idea is not to translate the content of um, the open educational resources, but to map the search query by finding the same search term in another language. And this is not done by um, translation in our case, but we all, uh, only use the query of Wikidata or the mapping that exists in Wikidata. And for all the key keywords that we have in the search index, we query all them from Wikidata, look what mapping is existing between um, those languages. And then we can search in one language and get out content of um, open educational resources also in different other languages. So the current state of this approach is um, that we have um, supported the translation of our user interface and vocabulary as well by getting um, some kind of first version automatic translation. And later on, we have a curation process for the um, user interface and the vocabulary for subjects or research, uh, resource types. And we have translated both of those components in German, English, and um, last month also in Ukrainian language. And for the keyword mapping, this is um, a completely automatic process where we don't have any um, curation because it's about 30,000 to 40,000 words that we have translated. But those are done with a um, simple automated process and we have regular updates to get um, new translations or um, updates of the existing translations as well. And um, the first approach shows that we have a coverage of about 60 to 30 percent for the more, more widespread languages like English, French, or Spanish. And even for the smaller languages like um, Dutch or Danish or uh, Ukrainian, we have about 45 to 55 percent um, of mappings for keywords, which are mostly um, the keywords that are um, more used than others. And this is our first approach, and we try to get better with this 
by um, optimizing um, the set of keywords that are selected by filtering some kind of um, keywords that are not set that much, re that much relevant for this. And so we also try to minimize the time that's necessary to translate the whole application um, into other languages. So you could, um, even for now, try out the result of such uh, search by, um, for example, the word climate change that we have as an um, overall, overall first example, but you could also type in some other subject, topic, whatever, to find out if there is a matching um, search result on this. And just for the example of um, climate change, we get about 262 um, results in different languages. Then you can choose um, which language you would um, like to have something, some content in. So that could be helpful for, helpful for international students who would like to go to another country, need um, the related um, subject-specific content um, for um, their own subject or a, a specific topic, um, for example. Yes, that's um, the current state of the approach of internationalization. And um, just a few words at the end um, I would like to have for a different kind of repositories that we connect to. So one of these examples was that we use edu sharing for our local repository, but we also have some approaches on using GitLab as an, a repository um, or backend for open educational resources. So GitLab is an open source version control system that's um, mainly used for software projects where we can store and um, have different versions of source code. But we could also use this for um, files, text files like Markdown or LaTeX that could be used for any um, other kind of um, internet um, interesting materials, um, not only for teachers, but also for students. So for example, we could start with a thesis um, as a student and later on use it for projects to work together and collaborate on this platform. And we could create textbooks or interactive course materials um, as well on GitLab and later on bring those materials directly by harvesting GitLab instances into um, a central index like the RC for open educational resources. Um, just to give you a short example um, how we have done so is that we have um, some experiments with um, an old thesis, for example, from my side, where I just tried to write it down in Markdown. I translated um, an old thesis from a work document within um, two or three hours it was into Markdown file. And later on from Markdown, I can generate HTML file, a PDF file, or even um, ebook files in the EPUB format. Um, to get some um, more modern format of output um, than only the PDF form, which is paper-based and not that good readable, let's say, on uh, mobile devices, for example. And we can also use um, those output formats um, as templates in order to prepare um, the technical process for also other teachers who are not familiar with GitLab and the technical processes. They just need to copy um, a template project and can then fill in their content and easily create the same um, interactive results for their courses. Um, one example I also would like to show you here is a very sim simple example from the framework of LiaScript. LiaScript is some kind of interpreter where you don't need any extension in the GitLab project. You just need a markdown file. And if you point to the URL from the raw markdown file and put it into the LiaScript website, you will get a rendered course material. And there are a lot of examples on the website of liascript.github.io that you could easily um, reuse and um, just try out to make some interactive courses with interesting features. One thing to use uh, to think about if you use or think about using GitLab as a repository is that we also need some um, metadata in order to find the materials, the right um, repositories to include into a search index. And that could be, for example, um, that we prevent a simple text file like a YAML file, but it's hard to write it down um, by hand. And so maybe we can um, just provide a uh, simple form that we um, do with a GitLab page that could be shared in other projects or in a template file to support the authors by um, bringing in the necessary information 
um, that we will use for the ERC to bring together all this um, harmonize, um, harmonized metadata. That's just um, one proof of concept, but it could be easily reused um, in other contexts as well. Um, so, just a few last words that I would like to um, give you is how to contribute to this project if you're interested in extending this functionality. So the easiest thing is to just contact us um, for questions, feedback, suggestions um, by the contact form on the site of earthy.org. Or if you're a more technical um, person, you can raise an issue for a feature request or a bug report, or even contribute um, to the project by, as an open source project by just um, creating a pull request for this. And if you are interested, just contact us um, for reusing or integrating RC in other platforms. That would be um, even interesting for us because we would like to um, spread it out into a connected, distri uh, distributed network of open educational resources. So just as a short conclusion, the idea is to have open source projects like the OSI or GitLab to create a network of open educational resources that could be easily set up on different places and connected to each other. And that would be a pragmatic solution, even if it's some kind of proof of concept in some components. Um, but it's easy for those who don't yet have any solution in their place and want to build it with a minimum um, effort to create one of those components. That's it from my side, and thank you for your attention. Um, if you have questions, yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Axel. Um, yeah, there's room for questions. I found a wireless mic, so I can just walk up to anyone with questions. Hi, Patricia Serrano from University of Nantes. I have several questions, but uh, maybe we will talk later. But right now, uh, I would like to know, uh, how do you collect um, words, keywords? I mean, there is an analysis of uh, resource, and so also it's uh, related. Those uh, resources are only uh, text or also, I don't know, code or... Uh, uh, I don't know, videos or something else? So you mean the, the keywords on the resources yes. themselves? Yes. Um, this is, as we have um, different um, resources or different sources connected, depending on each source. For the example, repository Twillo that we have in Lower Saxony, um, each author is um, responsible to put in some keywords. And so it's hard to harmonize it. So we have some open keywords and we have also some sets of keywords that could be assigned. But there's no um, general approach for all of those sources. Okay. Okay, so keywords have uh, the same relevance. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Oxo at this time? Yeah. Uh, I have many questions, and we will talk later. Uh, but how, how are you ranking the results? What was sort of a how, how does how do, you sh how do you decide what to show first? So that's a good question, and we don't have an answer at the moment. So we think about um, having at least um, an order by date, but um, for the moment we do not even have this because the repositories that we connect um, just have about 10% of their data really assigned with a um, creation date or a publication date, and even those are heterogeneous um, by meaning. And therefore, we don't yet have um, a ranking on this. We have a good filtering mechanism where you can um, just see which one um, you need to um, reduce um, the set of results, but we don't have a ranking yet. Uh -huh. Well, actually, follow-up question. Uh, what, I wasn't familiar with Wikidata yet, but is that the... Um, like, what defines categories? Is that, is that defining categories of information? Like, how are you... What, what, what metadata schema is being used to put oh, in resources? Like, how do you know it's engineering or... You know, so the like result that we get out, if you have um, Sparkle queries on Wikidata, is that we got, just get a simple CSV file um, that what we use for the index um, later on 
to create the synonyms, but we don't have a real scheme on this. So it's just what Wikidata has ah. with all um, their terms, and um, we just put out um, this as, and flatten it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're just you're collecting everything and showing everything. There's yeah. no, you're not, you're not putting things into buckets no, of yep. subjects. Mm -hmm. no. no. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's all the time we have for questions. Uh, Axel, thank you once more, and I'd like to invite Christina and Brian up to the stage.